two years ago, Islamic State forces overran the Iraqi city of Mosul. Suddenly, ISIL was a force to be taken seriously, fighting to create their dream of an Islamic caliphate. For the people of Mosul, it's been two years of terror, living under harsh new laws. Their city turned into a combat zone as Iraqi forces and their allies fight back. I'm Steve Chow. On this episode of 101 East, we report from the front line of the battle for Mosul. On the road to Mosul, signs of a nation ravaged by the war with Islamic State. Bombed building on your right. Bombed building. Another one coming up on the road. Put out his cars. Strewn by the side, the wreckage of an IS convoy pulverised by Iraqi troops a week before we arrived. US attack helicopters hover above us. IS has set oil wells ablaze, hoping to stop the US-led coalition from launching devastating airstrikes. The whole place feels on the brink of chaos, and the war against IS hangs in the balance. As the Iraqi army moves up from the south, Kurdish troops attack IS towns to the east and north of Mosul. The Kurds run an autonomous region in the north. While they're often at odds with Baghdad, they've formed an unlikely and unstable alliance to fight IS. They've been the West's most consistent ally in this war. I'm very happy today. I'm very happy today because uh, uh, because uh, uh, we are face to face to, to finish a dash. Uh. As we're filming, they spot an IS spy drone overhead and open fire. Is that a, is that a drone up here? Yeah, there it is. Drone. For some of the Kurdish troops known as Peshmerga, this fight is personal. Firas Daoud's hometown is just beyond the front line, and his mother is still trapped under IS control. I'm Firas's unit moves up to the front lines and their helmet cams record the battle. the Kurdish troops close in, IS snipers open up. As bombs fly overhead, their machine gun jams. After some hasty repairs, they return fire. By day's end, they have IS on the back foot. 
but there's a long way for this battle to run. When Islamic State seized control of Mosul in 2014, it shocked the world and signalled a new era in global jihad. The Islamic State that we saw sweep into northern uh, Iraq in particular, uh, this was really an army. This was not an insurgent force, it wasn't terrorist cells. This was really a conventional army that had enormous experience from the Syrian battlefields. Retired General David Petraeus knows Mosul intimately. He commanded American troops here after the US toppled Saddam Hussein. To see what we'd fought so hard to achieve together with our Iraqi partners uh, just be undone so rapidly was a, it's, it's like a blow to the solar plexus. The leader of IS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, appeared in a Mosul mosque to declare the birth of the caliphate. And it marked, in a lot of ways, this was arguably the high watermark, in fact, for the Islamic State. At its peak, IS controlled about a third of the populated area of Iraq and Syria and unleashed a wave of terror that struck fear into the hearts of Iraqis and Westerners alike. Bismillah. When we return to Iraq in November, hopes of a quick victory have been dashed. A humanitarian crisis is unfolding and the sick and the wounded stream out of the city. Some of the casualties are treated at a rudimentary clinic in a refugee camp just down the road. They've been hit by shrapnel and sniper fire. A medic, Dr. Fadi, is trying to arrange care for two injured children hit in a mortar strike. Their neighbour says they went to a military clinic but were turned away. Inside the medical tent, we come across a distressing scene. This patient is died, died, died. Died. Dead. Too fat. Rahul Allah Akbar. I'm very angry to see the patient. Is uh, died because no no ambulance, no help the patient. I don't uh, don't. As a damp and freezing winter sets in, the camps are filling up fast. Fighting in Mosul forces 10,000 people a week from their homes. Yisra Ali is one among more than 100,000 Mosul locals now forced to survive on international aid. يعني إحنا ما يعني ما توقعنا نطلع من يعني كان قوة القصف. فظلينا كان يم ورا البيت مالنا مثل الوادي ظلينا نمشي مع الوادي يضربونا نمبطح مع القاع 
ننبطح على القاع حتى القصف لا يجينا الفشق يعني حيل حيل كان مثل المطر فوقنا <laughs> Isra and her large family had already endured more than two years of harsh Islamic State rule. هما إيه إيه يعني كان يعني كانوا يعني حيل والله يخوفون يعني يصرخون على المرأة يعني هنون الرجل يأخذون الهوية مالته يجلدونه هي يعني كانوا إذا كان مزين لحيته يجلدونه إذا كان مرت رفع الخمار. The schools became factories for fundamentalism. And Isra kept her children home. Even Jiran, Stelam al Kutubu, Yani Shifto, Bakachan Kulu and Al Abwa to Silah, Shantadrub Silah, Yani Machan, Yani Manhaj Madrasi. In this unforgiving land, amidst all the tragedy and suffering, there are glimmers of hope. Firas, the Kurdish fighter I met on my first visit in October, has liberated his hometown, and against the odds, he has been reunited with his mother, who survived for two years under IS rule. His mother, Fauzia, is overjoyed every time he stops by. Over hot tea, she recounts her relief after living so long in fear. <laughs> Falzia had worried she'd never see Firas or his three brothers again. <laughs> Amidst an eerie winter fog, Firas takes me to what was once his sister's home. It's been destroyed not by IS, but in an airstrike. The bomb hit at 5 a.m. His sister and seven other family members were all home and killed in an instant. Their bodies lay under the rubble for two weeks before anyone could come and dig them out. It's our third trip to Iraq. The battle is reaching a crucial stage. The armed vehicles bear the scars of this long and brutal fight the windows shattered by sniper fire. Just our security advisor, who's in the Humvee in front. Ooh. It's rocket fire. We're getting very close now to the front line. There's still civilians here, plenty of them, but this is obviously an active combat zone. IS is still holding out in the suburbs just below this observation post. <laughs> Civilians desperate to escape risk death in the crossfire. We've been told that there's... ISIS in a car and four 
ISIS fighters on motorbikes that are supposed to be coming to attack the Iraqi army positions. They're a bit on edge right now. Iraqi military helicopters move in and a full-blown firefight erupts. Civilians still live here, but it's an unrelenting attack. After enduring days of fighting, some of the residents make it out to safety. A few houses away, the soldiers detain two suspected IS fighters. This old man insists they're innocent and denounces IS. But the soldiers insist they have proof and take us to see the evidence. What is this? 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 The soldiers take all three men into custody. With us looking on, everything is done by the book. But it's not always this way. Many soldiers boast about beating detainees or even worse, and they have the videos to prove it. Despite their relief at being liberated, the local Sunni population harbours long-standing grievances against the Shiite-dominated army. We see signs of that bitter divide when a soldier shouts, we are Shia, and shoots over the head of a fleeing child. It's not the way to win hearts and minds, and that will be crucial to the broader war against IS. There's no electricity here, and after the sun goes down, the city falls into darkness. Airstrikes rock the city. At dawn, the onslaught continues. Sadie, can us? Can us? Sniper, sniper. Ahmed! 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 Ahmed!
ارموا عليه ملاك التجار التجار عدوا علينا ارموا على جماعتنا هنا؟ اي على جماعتنا كلهم ها قاطع مالتنا كلها قاطع المسؤولين خلاص احمد لا 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 انه خلاص انه خلاص البستان البستان احمد يا سيد علي والله العظيم جب البستان والقران بالبستان It's easy to see how relations here could turn sour. This man complains his house was being shot at, even though there's no IS around. Aku harak el bahar bilil atum. Dawaish. Allah ali bil biat batal ad mal al qafil biat al darab bali u bali jaya. Yani ma ku harak. The highway past this point has not been cleared of roadside bombs, so the soldiers take the back way into the next front. As the soldiers enter a hamlet on the edge of the city, locals vent their fury at IS. But there's also confusion about who was with the enemy. This woman complains her son has been detained for no good reason. But the soldiers won't listen. As more people flee the front line. It's clear IS snipers are not far away. They're driving fast and the refugees are packed in low because we've been hearing sniper rounds come overhead, the distinctive crack or zing of a round followed by the thump that uh, is made when a rifle's fired in a distance. There's another one. So they've made it out under fire. The battle for Mosul is only half won. IS still controls the western side of the city, and the fight will not end here. The liberation of Mosul from the Islamic State will be a very, very important uh, achievement and a milestone in the battle against the Islamic State. But it will not mark the end of the Islamic State in Iraq or, or certainly in, in Syria. For many of the residents, it's time to put the distress of the past two years behind them and try out simple new freedoms. The men in this village are making a big show of shaving off their beards and the local barber is back in business. Salam alaikum. What may seem just cosmetic, hairstyles and beards, is also symbolic. IS used brutal authoritarianism to alter the appearance of a whole community. This young man is having a trim that would have landed him and his barber in deep trouble. <laughs> For the people of East Mosul at least, this could be the beginning of a new era.
how do you feel now? Oh, it's so good. It's a new life. I just born. I just born now. Yes, it's so good. Thank God and uh, thank uh, Iraqi Army. They rele released us uh, yesterday. Yesterday, yes. And now it's uh, the life is so good. So good. And uh, we will uh, we will keep it good. As we drive out of Mosul, it's hard to share that optimism. So many people in need of hope, so many reasons to fear the worst.